Go. So you already know, I believe you already know me, uh, Nidel with Synthesis VR. And today's webinar is going to be about the business rules and work rules. Uh, and as you know, or as you might be aware, Synthesis runs off of uh, all rules, uh, and that's how it kind of accomplishes a lot of things. And the work rules is pretty much the core of how you might run your business. Uh, we'll touch on a couple other things, specifically uh, um, experience types and your VR stations, but those are just so to get us into rolling into the, um, into the uh, business rules. And we'll talk about those in a future future webinar in terms of the specifics for the uh, the um, VR stations and experience types. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit about those. The first thing we'll talk about is experience types. Now experience types to a certain extent are an arbitrary naming thing. So right now we do have a bunch of them here. The ones at the top are uh, universally used so those are not editable but the ones you create which is the ones down here uh, are editable uh, and you need to create those before you can create any kind of rules uh, in your system and again these are somewhat arbitrary but they help you define different types of rules from there uh, the one thing to, to note just in terms of the difference between this one parties versus anything else is simply the fact that it is set up as a complete station booking so you can uh, have multiple stations booked with that experience type. Other than that, the other things are somewhat fine-tuning of a different uh, experience type. And again, we'll talk about those in a future webinar. But just note that those are names given, and you can change these names, and you can make them whatever you want. Uh, people sometimes ask, what is the difference between, for example, VR experience and immersive? It's simply a fact that it's a naming structure, and some of the rules inside of this might be different. Now, the other thing in terms of experience types is you, is you do need to make sure that you assign experience types to your uh, stations. So you do that from within the uh, VR stations section. When you go in there, you can see that you can edit your stations. Uh, in my case, I've edited these in this particular arcade to include these particular experience types for each station. And you'll notice that, as an example, parties is only listed in two and demo is only listed in one. Everything else is shared amongst all the stations. That just means that basically parties, when you do the all station booking, uh, complete station booking rather, this will only affect these two stations and this station will be left alone. And if you do demo, this is the only station that has that demo uh, rule attached to it. Again, we'll save any more details uh, in, uh, for a future webinar, but just know that you do need to attach experience types to your stations which then brings us to our business rules. And business rules can be accessed from here. Now, one thing you'll notice as you look in this section, and you'll, this will be the case when you first install the, uh, the, the software, you will have each of your rules broken up into different sections here. So you have an immersive VR experience, parties, and demo. Each one of these has a different set of rules underneath it that might affect their hours. So our rule for immersive is it's a 24 hour rule and it goes from, uh, actually it's called 24 hours, but I changed it last night to a 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. But we can have it running uh, 12 to 10 as an example here, 12 to 12 is a 24 hour rule that could be run all the time. Uh, and obviously this 24 hours does not necessarily relate to the exact times. And we have different times included here uh, in terms of pricing and rates. And we have, and and start dates. And that's going to be different in every one of these experiences, or I should say that can be different in each one of these. So this one has its own set of rules, 10 to 10 for Saturdays, 12 to 6 for Sundays, uh, 10 to 2 weekdays, 10, 2 to 10 uh, weekday night afternoons, and each has their own set of prices. Again, same with parties and same with demo. So everything has its own set of rules that can uh, be used uh, independent of each other. So let's take a look inside of each one of these rules to get a little bit of a sense of what it's like inside of there. You can do that by clicking on edit. Oh, actually, let me show you one thing first. Uh, to create a new set of rules, what you can do is press on this uh, three dot menu and click on add new duration based rule. We may touch on these other ones, but primarily the add new duration based rule. And that will give you this menu here that you can edit everything in here, but we'll use one that's already existing. 
and that'll be the immersive. So if we click on edit, this is where we can now edit this rule. Title is the first thing. The title, the only place the title shows up is primarily from within this section. So you can differentiate between one rule and another. It won't show up anywhere else. So don't, you don't have to try to name it something that you have to remember. Uh, this is just a, an arbitrary name again, talking about arbitrary. This is arbitrary in terms of the system, but it's important when it comes to naming it something so you can identify it. So obviously we call this uh, 24 hours. So we'll change that to 24 hours. Um, under here, you have this add experience duration and billing button. Whenever you see this with a plus sign, that means you can click on it and something underneath will appear. And you can click on it as many times as you need to add four things and then press the X button to delete those things. Once you've added them, what you'll want to do is use the drop down menu to change it to the proper experience type. Now it's important that you select the right experience type or you might end up with the wrong information in your booking widget and somebody can't book. So if you use, for example, VR experience, that's the one you'll choose. But we're gonna keep this one as immersive. Again, the name itself is somewhat arbitrary, don't worry too much about that. But just note that you wanna to try to keep them consistent. You'll then put in your time and how much you wanna charge for each of those uh, times. So in this case, 15, 29, 30, and then the rich people get $60, uh, 60 minutes for $100. Down here, you'll enter in your discount, I'm sorry, your sales tax, if your state requires it or country requires it. And then under discount IDs, you would click those again, you want to add those as you see fit. Now keep in mind that discount IDs, uh, discount rather, um, discounts in general, which we'll have another webinar on, uh, it are things that are again, somewhat, they have their own rules. And so they may not necessarily apply to this particular set of, of experiences. So for example, this October rule, I, uh, this October discount rather is set to only be in the month of October, uh, particularly last year, because I didn't set it for this year. But in October, somebody would get a specific discount that we have assigned. But even though this particular discount is attached to this particular rule, the rule itself or the, dis the discount will not apply because it only has its own ranges. And you can narrow that down by days of the week and dates as well. Uh, and I believe you can also attach it to specific experiences. Um, so when that video comes out, we'll have you guys watch that and see how that works. Uh, we already do have a video right now, but not a webinar one. So under time management, this is where you're going to set your date, your times of your rule. Now, open time and closed time isn't specifically your open times of your store, although it might match that if you have somewhat consistent rules. It's the beginning time of the rule and the end time of the rule. So this particular rule that we're working on is only from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., or we can make it till 4 p.m. Oops, not 4 a.m., 4 p.m., and that will change that. So this rule will then apply during those particular hours. It'll also only particular, uh, apply during this time frame, from this date to this date. And I can't change it further back. I think there's a limitation on that, but just assume that that will be the case. Actually, we'll try something here. Um, so we can have this, this a rule go from a certain date to a certain date. Now, the ones when it's extended quite far in the distance, uh, that might be something where it's your regular rule, but you might have one that is only uh, for two weeks you have a promotion or something like that, or, or specific hours that change for two weeks, you'll change those, or summer hours or something like that. The other thing is below that is you can narrow it down by day. So you can have a, a starting time and ending time that's very specific. You can have a, a starting date and an ending date that's very specific. And you can have a day of the week that's very specific. So that can narrow it down quite a bit. So a rule, you could have a different rule for theoretically every hour of the day. You could have a rule set up for different days of the week or different weeks in the year etc. Cleaning time will be time set aside after it, allowing you a buffer between this reservation and the next reservation so that if a reservation, for example, is made at two o'clock uh, and it runs for an hour, then it won't, you won't be able to book anything till 310. So this is allows you to have that slight buffer between sessions, allowing you that cleanup time between each. Uh, you can make that any time you want. Generally, five, 10 minutes is about the time that most people tend to use. Under advanced settings, you have a few different functions. Uh, on this first right here, allow overlap with rules. This one, uh, you want to, generally speaking, you want to keep this a yes. 
every rule within your specific experience type, this one being the immersive experience type, every rule in there you want to kind of work together harmoniously. So you want to leave it at yes and that allow different rules to sort of intermingle, but particularly if you have a, a morning and an, and an evening rule. So you have a, a morning hours and evening hours or um, rules, I should say. Um, you want to have those working together. If you change this to a no, this rule will override every other rule. And we'll talk about that in a little bit in terms of how that might affect things. But we'll leave this as yes for now. Generally speaking, again, yes. Uh, consider the no being for holidays, special days, special hours. Voice announcements. You can set these for as many as much as you want. So if we wanted to add more announcements, you can do that. The thing to note is everything but the last one or the shortest one is going to be something along the lines of you have X minutes left. The last one has uh, a bit more. It'll say you have X minutes left. Please let us know if you want more time. And this can be edited in the customization section of your arcade. For now, just note that that will be different. That last one will be different. Even if it was the only one, it would be that one statement of let us know if you want more time. And you don't necessarily have to have uh, any times listed. You could just turn these off and there'll be no announcements at all. I tend to like them. And I think they're a good way of reminding customers to buy more time uh, or that they need to finish up if necessary. Optional items for sale. Uh, you can add items for sale, and, and we briefly saw that in the three-dot menu, and that might be something will consist of another webinar. For now, just note that you could potentially have items that can be sold along with your session. And the last tab is games, which has two main sections, max games per session uh, and assigned game categories. Now, the max game per session allows you to limit the number of games that you can have being played during that whole session. So typically zero will be your go-to and zero will be an unlimited number of games that can play as many as they want. But for particularly a demo, you might have one. And what happens is when they, that game launches during the session and they go back to the game menu, even if you had 10 games available, it will only show that one game available to play. If you were to set it up as four, for the first three games, it will show the entire menu. But once they get to that, fourth game, it will then bring uh, re reduce the menu down to just those four available. Uh, so use case scenarios, again, one for demos if you want to leave that. Uh, if you want to have a sort of standard session and allow only 10, game, uh, 10 games to be played, this is the place to do it. If you want to have a premium then that has unlimited, then you might have a different, uh, different session. Uh, I'm sorry, a different um, number or zero. So this is a bit uh, um, something that you can play around with and find different use case scenarios, but those are the, the main ones that I might find. Assign games per category. So as I'm getting categories rather. So in this case, each rule could have its own set of uh, games. So you might have, again, a premium work rule and then a standard work rule. And the standard work rule will only have 20 games, for example, available. And then the premium one could have a whole bunch of other games available to it. Additionally, you might have party, party categories where you would have, uh, in this case, we have no BAM. This is part of our last webinar on game categories. We have no Arizona Sunshine. This allows us to block certain games from certain sessions. So if you had a, a work rule that was set up as kids parties, you might have those specifically attached to it so that you can block certain games from happening. Any questions at this point, uh, feel free to type them in the chat window. I'll get those and then we can uh, see if anybody has any questions. And if not, we can move on. Excellent. I'm just going to save this. That's the last thing you'll want to do. And that will save the rule. And if you notice that it's still 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And if I refresh it, that will change it to 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. and change the, the time there. I don't believe we've changed anything else in this. Obviously, 24 hours is wrong. But that's again a just a title to help you identify it. Now, if we look down a little bit, and we'll see that we have the VR experience down here, and we have different setups. We have our uh, if we go down to the bottom, we've got 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. is our morning hours, and those morning hours are um, 15 minutes for $15, 30 minutes for $20, and 60 minutes for $30. Now, if I were to do it in the weekday afternoons, 2 a.m. to 10 p.m. 
That would be 17, 25, and 40. Nothing else is different. The dates are the same. The hours are different. Uh, the pricing for the hours are different. And then my Sunday and, uh, Saturday and Sunday hours actually are the same price but the hours are different because usually your Sunday hours tend to be a little bit different. So you can refine those. And this could be something where what you do is you have your availability uh, for those times for booking uh, and for availability. And this could theoretically be your store hours. So if you build your store hours around this VR experience, you can do that. Uh, you'll notice again, scrolling down, we've got these two others. So I've got our parties. Parties are now just one thing. They're available from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. every day of the week. And they have their own pricing for 60, 120, and 180. Now remember when I said earlier that when you're attaching your uh, your rules, your, your um, experience types to your stations, this is set up to be essentially a two-station party, at least in this arcade, where if somebody were to book something, they automatically get booked into two stations. There's no need to add stations. They won't necessarily be taking off stations, but this will allow them to, uh, to book just with one button and do the parties. But it is a different experience type than VR experience in the sense that when they book it, it, it will still uh, take the, it will still assign the, the, um, the session to stations that are available, not to stations that aren't available. Uh, so these still share the same stations, but it will allow them to, uh, to book them separately and have its own rules. So my, I might have a parties game list that I would edit. Uh, and I might even, if I wanted to, for example, if I wanted to do this and I could just say kids parties, and then if I go into games, I might change the games to include no band squad, for example. And then save. Now, typically I wouldn't necessarily do it quite this way because now you have two rules that are essentially the same, same rules. Uh, but the, what you might do is you might create a different experience type that is kids parties and then assign this to that. So just again, as an example, if we were to say we had that experience type and we were gonna call it party here, I would change that and save it. And if I refresh, now what you'll see is you'll see we have uh, this party one, which we'll consider kids parties. And that will have the kids parties title in here. It'll have different game category attached and it will be for parties. Um, now you would have to, on your booking widget, have to differentiate between one or the other. And you might have that in terms of the description. This, this experience type party and parties is what would appear in your booking widget. And we'll show that probably towards the end of this webinar. Uh, and then I have my demo. Demo is available any time of the day. It's five minutes, five dollars. Only has theoretically a dozen games or so and only has allows one game. Now this one in particular will not show up on my website because I don't have this set up to be uh, a booking bookable. Uh, they, this is a walk-in type experience. Somebody would walk in, do a demo, pay five minutes if stations were available uh, and then do that five minutes and that be done from there. Now, last thing you can do is you could do a mix of rules in one rule. So if we go into our add new duration base rule, and we were to create three different rules, I could have immersive, I could have standard, and I could have premium. And I would then be able to add in times for that. Let's say 10 minutes for that is 10. 10 minutes for that is 20 and 10 minutes of this is 30. And we'll call this a mix. And we'll just need to add in our times. Again, we'll just say 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. Just for this month. So we'll do this May there and it's every day of the week. And those are the, the main things you want to add. Um, so you want to make sure that your, your experience types are added. You want to make sure your times are added. Everything else is optional. And, um, and the only thing I might recommend is making sure that the, in advance you put this as yes uh, versus no. Uh, you can add in the voice minutes, optional uh, items for sale, and your game categories, which doesn't necessarily point. Let me just also point out that if there are no assigned game categories, uh, then what will happen is the home button will appear and show all the games that you have available. 
uh, and it won't be just uh, broken down by category. So this allows you also, just as a note, to be able to have game categories assigned for certain rules, or if you don't want game categories, you can have the whole list and you can um, leave that as blank. Most of the time, it's better to have at least some broken down uh, rules, otherwise it becomes a very massive list, uh, depending on how many you have. If you only have a dozen games or so in, in your arcade, there's no reason to use this, but it might help in terms of, um, this might help more so in terms of restrictions if you don't use game categories than it does in anything else. So once we've set that up, we'll go ahead and save this. And if we refresh, we'll see that we have now a rule that doesn't have a category attached to it or a, a, um, an experience type attached to it. That's because it uses these experience types along these days. Now the disadvantage to this is that um, you of course will have all these rules tied to the same game categories, tied to the same hours and things like that. I tend to prefer to create things separately so I can easily see what my, my separation is. But again, if you have one set of rules, uh, if, if you want to make it easy, you would have one set of rules with one set of uh, availability and you know one set of hours, then this is the best way to do it is to keep it all together and then you don't have this broken down thing here. And you could set up different hours similarly to how you would set up this by simply creating another rule, matching this and just changing the hours uh, and days accordingly. So you could have a Sunday shift and you could have a Saturday shift and that would end up allowing you to... Um, to have different hours per, per day versus just having a generic 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. So this is still flexible in that regard. The inflexibility is that all of these are now sort of tied together. Any questions now? While I take a drink of water. Excellent. So, One last thing that you can see in here is I do have a closed session here, a uh, closed uh, rule. So if you are closed on a specific day and you want to not have any bookings, what you could do is create a rule. Uh, this will get automatically, I'm sorry, you, can, you want to make sure first of all that you choose the experience type you want to block off because this particular rule is, would be tied to a specific experience type. So you wanna make sure that you tie this to a specific experience type. If you want this to be across all your stations or all your experience types, you would probably do this and do parties. And I'm not sure if this is in there, but we'll see immersive types. So we'll add those in. You don't have to worry about time or anything like that. That is just there so that um, it'll, it'll automatically get populated with the 60, 30, but this is what it will be for now. Under time, you can leave everything else blank. Under time management, you want to just pick a certain time. What I do is 12 to 12 and one second. Um, you want to have that restriction there. You want to pick the days that you want to change this particular rule, and you want to pick the day. Now, actually, I should just jump back to the open time. This might be effect, uh, might be different if, for example, this is a closed rule. Uh, if you were just changing your hours, so let's say uh, Sunday, you're, uh, you're extending your hours for this one particular one, you would change this rule for that particular Sunday to be whatever the hours are. This, this rule is going to override the others. Um, and how it overrides it, just, just to jump ahead a little bit, is via advanced. And this is where that no means. That means that this rule isn't to a certain extent working with the other rules. Uh, it is going to override the other rules. Remember, the other rules only in the experience type that we've selected here. So if you want to be available for parties, you would just remove this. Or I'm sorry, if you don't want different hours, I should say, because again, this isn't necessarily a change in, uh, a, a, it isn't necessarily a closing or opening thing, it's just a change in hours. And my change in hours are, are going to be to close the store. So from 12 to 12 and one second, uh, on Monday, the 27th, I theoretically we closed. And, and as such, I've named this as closed under the billing. And so I've selected my, my day of the week. Uh, if you don't select it, it will not affect anything. So you want to make sure you at least select the day of the week because this will apply to. And then under advanced, you make sure that no is selected. Everything else isn't necessary because none of those things are going to matter, except again, I, again, I'm, I'm stepping ahead. 
I'm stepping out of turn here, or speaking out of turn. Um, if this is going to be just a replacement of hours versus a closing thing, you want to make sure you fill in these appropriately based on whatever you normally might do. In the case of the close thing, which seems to be the, the, diff, uh, the thing that people request, uh, you wouldn't necessarily be doing any of these. So if I click on save, you'll see if we refresh that that now close rule has um, actually, it is carried over into the uh, other things here um, because I've, I've added it to the different, um, there it is. I've added it to, I've created multiple uh, uh, experience type sessions. So it'll create a different tab that is blocked. Now, if I go to my arcade and go to sell a ticket and we go to choose the 27th, you'll see there's no times available. And this should carry into parties as well. And you can see that that's not available. But we didn't add premium. So if I click on premium, you'll see that premium, once it refreshes, let's go ahead and click out of it again. Uh, oh, actually, I don't have hours for that, so it wouldn't necessarily matter. Uh, oh, it does, I do. So this, this is available on the 27th. Whereas again, if I were to go back to VR experience, there is no availabilities on that Monday. So that's how you create the, the closed thing and also how you might create different hours for one specific day, uh, not, not a weekly thing where Sundays are different, but basically the holiday, uh, which in the US is Memorial Day uh, on Monday the 27th. So you might have different hours on that day or you might be open where normally you're closed. So this is a good way to uh, override those rules and do that. And if we were to go in to check our booking widget, And open this up. And if I click on the 27th, you'll see that there are no times available. And if I were to click parties, same thing, nothing would be available. But if I click on premium, which we thought, yep, so premium, because I didn't change it, would show that I have hours available. So if you op are open for parties, but not open for other days, this could be an, an opportunity to, to do that as well, to have that, uh, again, just for specific days. But if you're normally open in the afternoons for parties, but closed for other thing else, then of course you can leave that uh, available uh, in a different rule than that, so. Any questions at this point? That, that pretty much covers most of that stuff in business hours, but if there's anything that you have uh, come across or that you have a question on that I didn't cover, uh, feel free to shoot that over now. And then uh, otherwise I'll show a couple other additional things, um, but I didn't practice these, so we will kind of wing it for those. So under business hours, you have also a, a new game per game rule. Uh, this is good for things like um, potentially Beat Saber or uh, Space Power Trainer. Note that Space Power Trainer has its own rules. It allows you to, for example, end a game or end a session uh, when a game, uh, when the person dies. So this would be a good way to do it where you're charging somebody a per game, uh, per game thing versus charging them. And this would be more like a, an actual arcade for uh for the like if somebody walks in puts in quarters plays a certain game and if they die they die and they don't get their quarters back so this is something like that uh add v value settings this will add that uh something else that i created uh if i jump into here I'll just show you that again this under advanced has optional items for sale and those you can basically create from the added value settings and you can do things like um just offhand t-shirt uh um, the cushion the foam uh replacements you could add um, drinks things like that this isn't necessarily where you would sell items per se but this is just adds value uh to that particular session so there might be some things you add to the session that would be uh, another way so parties another example parties would be uh, party room you could add that as an added value setting there. Uh, and then bulk edit, what that allows you to do is first you have to go in and you have to select the things that you want to bulk edit. And then you click on bulk edit. 
And what that will do is that will allow you to change certain parameters that you can do that are that can be done across all of these particular settings. Uh, if you don't want to change something, then what you do is you just click on that and that just doesn't get changed. If you don't want to discount, change discounts, you do that. If you want to change sales tax across everything, you would do that. Um, and the only thing that you'd have to do, so let's remove that because we don't want to change that. Anything in the future, anything with a red underline uh, is required. So we don't want the things that are required because we don't want to change them. Actually, they probably are required in the sense that I do need to do those um, some other way. So I can't save it until I've entered those in. But this allows you, again, to change these things across multiple categories. And then once you're done, you click on save and then it will save those things. And those are just uh, additional bonus type uh, things that you can do in there. Um, and I think that pretty much covers everything. If you have any questions, this is the last chance to do it here. But as, no, as usual, you can always send emails to info at synthesisvr.com, or you can always reach us on Facebook or some of the other methods out there for social media. Um, but those are the best ways is the in, uh, email address or to send a message on Facebook through Facebook Messenger. Uh, we may already be talking, so yay. Um, anyway, thank you very much for joining us. I appreciate that. And uh, looking forward to the next one. I believe the next one is going to be about, uh, it's either going to be about launching sessions and what that, what's involved in that and things you can do with it. Or I might discuss things like booking widgets and, um, and things of that nature. Uh, maybe both, but we'll see. Uh, but thanks for joining us. You guys have a great day. And we'll talk to you soon.